Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Whether it's corporate email, collaboration tools for remote workers, barcode scanners for logistics workers, or stock market tickers for finance types, there's a whole world of apps for work out there. Now, with Android for work, you can focus on making great apps for business. And with Google Play for work, you can make apps available to the whole workforce. So with your apps at work, we can all be productive while we're mobile. My name is James Kelly, and I'm a product manager on the Android team. Last year, we launched Android for Work as a way for IT admins to de deploy devices and apps to their employees and keep corporate data safe and secure. Now, today we're announcing we're expanding Android for Work to cover new kinds of devices and apps and make it simpler to grow the audience for your apps to all kinds of businesses. And I'm Matt Goodridge, a product manager on the Google Play team. At Google Play for Work, our mission is to reduce the barriers for developers such as yourselves to get innovative apps discovered uh, and used by businesses while keeping the business's data safe and secure. Hey, and I'm Richard Hindman, a developer advocate on the Android team, helping to make sure you guys have all the materials you need to build great applications, but also taking feedback from you and taking it to the guys making the products like James and Matt. Did you know that according to Gartner, Businesses globally spent $143 billion on application software in 2015 uh, across desktop and mobile. Just to put that in perspective, that is 25% bigger than the entire global spend on video games across all platforms in the same year. And apps targeted at mobile devices are by far the, growest, the fastest growing business segment um, that there is. So, but compared to the gaming industry, business apps are much further behind in moving to mobile devices. In part, that is because of the lack of developers taking advantage of this opportunity. In fact, Gartner says that demand for business uh, apps will outstrip uh, development reach by five to one. That's going to be pretty exciting news for you guys. It means we're early in an exciting revolution in business software, and developers are already starting to see success. Let's look at some examples. DocuSign launched its e-signature business knowing it would need to appeal to both consumers who needed to sign and return documents on the go, and businesses who saw tremendous value in making every decision, approval, workflow, and signature 100% digital. They recently said that 99% of mobile revenue comes from businesses sending documents to obtain approvals and signatures to transact business faster. And consumers help expose businesses to DocuSign because signing and returning a document is always free. It's an incredible viral network that drives revenue growth. Dropbox started as a file sync and share solution for consumers but the number of Dropbox business customers has grown globally three and a half times in the past two years. There were 200 million unique mobile devices connected to Dropbox last year. Cool, thanks, Matt. So it's clear there's a huge opportunity in business app development. Um, so why develop on Android? Let's look at this from the perspective of an IT admin. Now, often businesses require a range of both internally and externally developed apps. And those apps have to work across multiple platforms. So to manage all of that complexity, IT will often partner with a supplier of Enterprise Mobility Management, or an EMM. Now, with Android for Work, we work with some of the top EMM partners, like those you see here. And we've worked with other developers, OEMs, and carriers to make their products great for business. Now, businesses can choose the solution that's right for them. And because Android is an open platform, these solutions cover a wide range of business needs. So in addition to this variety of apps, IT also need to offer different kinds of devices for different use cases. Now, since Android supports a really diverse range of devices at all kinds of price points, as a platform, it's a great uh, tool to give IT the choices they need to mobilize the entire workforce. So I know many of you will be familiar with Android for Work. Um, but for those of you that aren't, um, let's describe a little bit about what we do. So first, there's BYOD. Android for Work is a great option for bring your own device. Now, organizations allow employees to bring their favorite Android device for work to work. With Android for Work, employees can use the devices they want, but get the apps they need. 
This works by the business is able to create a secure work profile on the device where work apps and data reside, and these are securely managed by the IT department. Data in the work profile is kept safe and separate, so the business can protect against data loss. But at the same time, the employee can be confident that their company can't access personal data uh, or activity. Now next, Android for Work has a model we call device owner. If a business prefers to give employees fully managed devices with access to the most secure corporate systems, that's what device owner is for. In DO, the company owns the whole device and manages, uh, manages the data on it. IT has complete control over the entire device, which may mean, for example, that the user can only use apps that are approved by IT. And finally, there's COSU, corporate-owned single-use devices. This is a very diverse range of business needs. You may want to manage a fleet of devices that are used for a single purpose, for example, like a kiosk. COSU devices are typically deployed where the device is locked to a single or a small number of apps. And this mode gives the company confidence that the device cannot be used for anything else, uh, even if, for example, it's a kiosk in a public place. We've built comprehensive data uh, policy controls into Android that ensure company data is safe while it's on the mobile device. For example, blocking screen capture or stopping content being copied from a work app into a personal app. You can find out more about all of these controls at developer.android.com work. We're sending the link to the event space now. Security is a critical aspect of any mobile platform in the workplace. The Android security team is raising the bar on Android security. You can see more details in the year-end review that we published back in April. And if you missed Adrian Ludwig's talk on, Adrian, uh, on Android security this morning, uh, you can catch up with it on YouTube. All Android security is, also, is, is pushing the boundaries with things like Android's monthly security patch updates and much, much more. We're posting the link to the video and the report to the event space right now. And finally, app management. Google Play for Work enables an administrator to authorize employees to use apps on their work device or work profile, or push install those apps remotely and configure them. These controls are exposed to the administrator through the business's EMM console and to the user through the Play Store app on the device. We'll see examples of these shortly, but let's go back to James to find out what's new in Android N. Cool. Thanks, Matt. So I think we're all clear on what Android for Work is now. Uh, and as you know, we're constantly making improvements and investments in, uh, in the platform. So last year, businesses told us they wanted better security and more controls for IT admins. And users told us they wanted a better user experience and a better work-life work -life balance. So in the end developer preview, We've expanded on those themes with a range of new capabilities in Android. First off, uh, if you were at uh, the What's New in Android uh, N talk yesterday, you'll have seen Chet talk about this feature. Uh, it's a great feature uh, to enhance uh, security and control over corporate data. We call it the Work Challenge. So Work Challenge is a separate passcode that protects work apps and data on a BYOD device. So this means that IT no longer needs to set complex password requirements for the device lock screen, which get in the way. Instead, they can, accept, uh, they can set a passcode requirement that only applies to work apps. And they have policies around how often they can show that password requirement, um, and so on and so forth. We also added file-based encryption and fast secure wipe on supported devices. So when an employee switches devices, corporate data is never compromised. Another long requested feature is always on VPN. So we've added always on VPN to the platform. Incidentally, this works for both consumer and business apps. So now a business can route all data traffic from work apps to their VPN from boot up to shut down. Now, because the system can directly bind VPN services without interaction, VPN clients need to handle some new entry points on the device. For example, at boot up, the system service will start the VPN. So if you build a VPN app, you need to bear this in mind. You'll also need to ensure that you can support user configuration of the always-on capability in your app's UI. 
to, to help you with that, there are some open source ex uh, samples uh, using OpenVPN available on GitHub. And we're going to add a link to that in the event space now. So alongside uh, Always on VPN, we've made some additional improvements into work contacts to better integrate them into the system dialer, messenger, and contacts app. So this lets you search across work and personal contacts seamlessly from those apps. And for example, if you've got a call from a colleague in the call log, that'll resolve and show you the colleague's name rather than just a number. We've also improved transparency in the system UI. So you always know when your device might be affected by your IT department's policy. We also allow, for example, IT to set a support message directly in the system UI to provide uh, uh, links to uh, support resources. Now, users often tell us they love having the option of separate apps for work and personal tasks. But are there times when you would love to detach from work? So we've added a feature we call Work Mode to Android. Now, Work Mode lets you control work apps from Quick Settings. You can shut them all down at the tap of the briefcase icon in Quick Settings. When you're in Work Mode, work and personal apps run side by side. But outside of Work Mode, work apps don't run. They don't generate interruptions. They don't consume battery. And they don't consume data. So it's like an off switch for work. How cool is that? And there's a full list of features in the end developer preview uh, documentation. Uh, we have added uh, over 20 features into, into the Android N release for business. And we're adding a link to those features into the event space now. If you need to evaluate the full range of capabilities in Android, we encourage you to download our EMM developer-focused app called Test DPC from Play. So Test Device uh, Policy Client functions as a profile owner or a device owner with local controls over policy. So this lets you set policy and restrictions locally without needing like an enterprise server up in the cloud uh, to configure the device. And if you'd like to test your app for compatibility with Android for Work, it's a really great tool for that. So by listening to feedback from IT and making these improvements in Android N, we hope we've made Android an even better solution for business. Be sure to install the N developer preview if you haven't already, and check out features like Work Mode so you can enjoy that vacation on the beach free of interruptions from the office. So how can you get started with Android for Work? As a developer, you need to know that your app will work for all kinds of businesses. So to do that, we are going to give you a sneak peek of a new way to get set up with a fully functioning work profile so you can test apps for work on your own device, or you can use this to set up a work profile for a clean separation between your work and personal lives. Now, in our example, I want you to imagine I'm a marketing manager uh, yeah, at an aquatic supply company called Happy Guppy. Alongside the productivity apps, I want my sales team to use Showpad to show a glossy, interactive, magazine-style brochure to prospective customers. I want all my sales team to have it, and I want them up and running quickly and not have to search for an app and maybe configure it or log into it. Let's switch to uh, the Chromebook, please. First, let's get set up on the web. Now, Play for Work allows IT to pre-approve apps or make a range of optional apps available on your device. So Rich, let's go ahead and improve Showpad. Cool. That's done. Now, Showpad's approved. Approving. Approved. We need to switch uh, to, um, uh, now we need to set up users in our new business. Um, think of this as just like IT would do when onboarding a new employee, for example. So Rich is going to go ahead and create a user. Now. After Rich does this, we'll be prompted to switch to our device and download an app that will be used to manage it. We're going to do that in a sec. But here is the cool thing. We've simplified setup into one step. Trying out Android for work on your device is as simple as scanning a QR code. Don't scan it. It won't work. <laughs> so now, let's switch to our device. All right. So first. Uh, Matt's going to find the Android for Work app, which will guide us through setup. 
see there's a wizard in here, and it's going to scan the QR code. Now, after scanning the QR code, uh, a work profile is set up for work apps and data. Now, just as a reminder, the work profile is a secure space that's managed by your employer. But of course, in this case, the employer is you. So you're kind of self-employed, I guess. So apps that are available to employees are shown in a separate Play for Work store. As well as push install of pre-approved apps, admins are able to put a range of optional apps uh, into the Play for Work store for an employee to install later. Now, finally, on a BYOD device, we place a badge on work apps. Notifications as well are badged, and recents are badged with the briefcase logo. This is to help distinguish them from your personal apps. So after um, the secure, uh, the, the point is here, this, all of the setup for Android for Work has been simplified into that single step. No more having to enter obscure usernames and passwords or navigate through confusing screens. In this case, we built the setup token into the QR code, but other mechanisms are possible. For example, uh, if there's no QR reader on the device, we'll fall back to a one-time auth code. So hopefully, after a few moments, our work profile is set up. This work profile is a separate space for work apps and data. And the key here is that in a real Android for Work deployment, IT only controls this space and not the entire device. So after setup is complete, you'll see work apps on the device in a work profile. Initially, it contains a few badge system utilities in the Play for Work store. The work apps are badged and organized into a work folder in the Google Launcher. And the Showpad app that we approved is being automatically installed now from the cloud from Google Play for Work. While that's happening, let's hope the Wi-Fi holds up. Switch back to slides, please. So we're going to be launching this new way to set up Android for work on your device later this year. You'll be able to create a fully functioning work profile with Play for Work in it on supported devices, which include those running Marshmallow and, of course, the end developer preview. You can use the web console to simulate the way an IT department would deploy and manage apps and set policies on your device. It's a great way for developers and IT admins to evaluate Android for Work for their organization with no extra setup required. You just can use this. So for now, uh, you can visit our sandbox area where we've got some of these devices set up. And some of our engineering team is on hand to show you this and uh, other demos um, in some more detail. So how does Google help you get your app to businesses? By publishing your app through Google Play, your app is automatically enrolled to be distributed to businesses through Google Play for Work. As you just saw in the demo, when an administrator wants to deploy your app at scale to their users, the administrator makes sure that the users are set up for mobile management, selects your app in the management console and the group of users they want to deploy it to, and in one click, your app gets deployed to all of those users' devices. This gives you another route to getting users versus trying to get them one by one as if they were consumers. Now, let's move on to how to make your app really awesome for businesses. Some of the biggest challenges that we've heard from business customers and developers are app customization, configuration, and single sign-on. How do you make your app behave differently for different customers and still maintain one APK? How do you enable business users to get started with your app with minimum manual configuration? How do you ensure that business customers incur minimum support costs when running your app? We're going to cover two things that will help you address that. First of all, customization and configuration of your app, and then secondly, integrating business single sign-on with your app. You can allow administrators to remotely customize and configure your app in Android for Work by allowing a configuration bundle to be sent down to your app in a schema that you, the developer, define. What's really unique about Android for Work is the way we deliver that configuration down to the device. Later on this year, we're going to be allowing configuration to be sent through Google Play for Work 
rather than the, the EMM directly on the device. Google Play ensures that that configuration bundle lands on the device at the same time as install in an atomic operation, ensuring a seamless experience for the user and that the schema of the config bundle matches the version of the app that's being installed. So let's start look, looking at how managed configuration can help you. Let's say you're the developer of the Todoing app, which you distribute to individual users through Google Play. You only want to maintain one APK, but your customers want to customize your app. For example, they want to make it corporate colors or put their logo on it, including in the loading screen. You can set up configuration parameters for foreground and background colors, a URL for the logo. And if your app loads without the config, e.g. on an individual's device downloaded on the Consumer Play Store, your app defaults to your regular experience. If the config is available, you can customize the experience from the first time the app launches. You still maintain just one APK. So what is this magic? For app developers, app configurations are just like app restrictions that came in in Jelly Bean, although this time it's IT admins doing the configuration and not parents. Your app can support any configurations that you want. You just have to define them in an XML file like this. Uh, the restriction type there, we have a string, but there's lots of different options of integer, multiple choice, Boolean, other things. And then you refer to that restrictions file with all the separate restrictions you want to, to specify in your Android manifest. And it's pretty much that easy. It's easier than adding a preferences screen into your application, because the rest of the, the heavy lifting is done by the EMMs and the Google Play APIs. The EMMs go and read these configurations using the APIs straight from your XML files from our servers. And then the EMMs offer up configuration screens to IT admins. The IT admins can then go and set in corporate logos, login hints, whatever they need to do. And then in your application, you just use the restrictions manager, just like you would with app restrictions, and call get application restrictions. When you call this, you'll get that bundle of restrictions down that the IT admins have set through the EMM consoles that they're used to using anyway. So it really is easier than putting a preferences screen in your application, and you can move all that logic out and let IT admins set preferences for users instead. Also, you're going to want to listen out for, for a broadcast on the system. There's a broadcast action applications restriction changed, which is harder to say than it is to type. <laughs> but IT admins can change these things at any time. So you listen for the broadcast, and if they change it once your app's already installed, you'll get that broadcast with the new bundle, and you can change whatever the IT admins change, whether it's the VPN location or anything. Great. James. Thanks, Rich. So many, let's move on now to look at single sign-on. So many companies use web single sign-on, allowing their users to access all company software and resources using a single username and password. Single sign-on has long been a feature of web-based services, but getting it to work on a mobile device has been pretty challenging until now. Architectures vary, but let's focus on the most common case, where you have a SaaS backend for your app, which might also have a web component, and that your customer is using an enterprise authorization server to manage all of their single sign-on and app authorization. What typically happens today is that the user is first prompted to identify, uh, or identify themselves with some kind of identifier. This is often the company email address, but it could also be the company name. This helps the app resolve the identity provider that the company is using uh, via its SaaS backend. And then the app then presents the login screen for the identity provider, where the user enters their username again oh. and their password before getting to the app. And then if I install another app, I have to go through the same thing again and again. Ouch. Wouldn't it be great if the, if SSO on mobile just worked like it did on the web. If the user has already logged in with their SSO credentials on their device, then all they have to do is accept an OAuth permissions prompt once, and even then they don't have to do that if they've already accepted it on another device. We're going to go through how to get this ideal SSO flow in your app. There are two stages. Firstly, we're going to use managed configuration to tell your app which SSO provider uh, to use and then pre-populate the username. 
Secondly, we're going to use a new feature in Android called Chrome Custom Tabs, to go, together with the App Auth library, to persist the user's login state across apps. Let's start with a managed configuration. You need to create a field in, man, uh, in managed co configuration called Login Hint, which your app can send to its SaaS backend, which will help it resolve the identity provider. If you've implemented Web SSO, then this should sound pretty familiar. Let's see how this login hint field should be used. So the administrator is going to be using the EMM console to configure the, your Android app. It'll send the login hint in the configuration bundle down. When your app first loads, it sends the OAuth request to your SaaS backend. It contain, also sends down that login hint so the SaaS backend can then resolve uh, the, which enterprise authentication server uh, to use. Then, depending on which technology you've used, whether it's OAuth, whether it's SAML, whether it's OpenID Connect, uh, you can uh, communicate to the uh, auth server and then present the login screen to the user. So that's the initial sign-up flow. Now let's use a persistent login session with Chrome Custom Tabs. First of all, let's take a look at what Chrome Custom Tabs are. It's a secure context where you can show any web page but the host app can't inspect the contents. The user can see the server address, but they can't edit it. And the cookie state is shared with any other custom tab and Chrome browser itself. This is what's going to give you that persistent login state. It's a system browser activity presented in the app context, so you don't need to worry about users being redirected between different contexts. It ships in Chrome 45, and it supports all devices back to Jelly Bean. Chrome ships with every device with the Play Store, so it will be there. If your, user, if your user's device defaults to uh, a different browser that doesn't support custom tabs, uh, then Chrome may still be available. You don't actually need uh, to integrate with Google accounts. This is just an example, by the way. So using the App Auth library, uh, from OpenID, you can very quickly build your auth step, which will directly show the customer's identity provider uh, login screen if the user is not yet signed in on the device. If the enterprise auth server is configured to pass the username uh, from the login hint to the identity provider, then it will be pre-populated as well. And if the user has already signed into their account, then they go straight in. No username and password at all. How easy is that? Pretty easy. Rich. Thank you very much. So you can simplify the SSO in your application, making lives easier for users and IT admins. And the best bit about it is there's a library available for both Android and iOS that's going to do all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, it speaks both OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect, and has convenience methods to assist with common tasks like performing actions with a fresh token. As Matt says, it'll use Chrome Custom Tabs, which has access to that shared cookie jar, so it's just going to work. And if Chrome Custom Tabs isn't available, it falls back to the system browser. You just lose that in-app branding that you'd get. So you can head over to github.com slash openid, and there's an AAR there for Android, so you can drop it in your project. But there's also, it's also in Maven Central, so you can stick it in your Gradle file. You've got the dependency, and you can get up and running with the new SSO flows embedded inside your applications. Also. As Matt mentioned, you're going to want to use that login hint. Are people already doing SSO foes and OAuth with login hints? People nodding one, two, yeah, quite a few. OK, so for the app restriction for login hints, it's exactly the same as before. Just give the IT admins that uh, item in their console by putting this XML in your, your application so they can add a login hint that gets driven down to your application, and then your auth flow is much more simple. Great. Thanks, Rich. So that's the theory. But let's have a look at it on a, on a real app in a real device. So let's switch to the demo. Thank you. So we're going to go back to Showpad, which we installed earlier. But first of all, I'm going to show you Showpad running in a consumer profile so you can see the difference in the experience. So I, I've already installed uh, Showpad here um, just from the Consumer Play Store. It launches with a, a warm welcome telling me which features it's got. And then I can either log in or try a demo. I'm going to log in. It first asks me for my organization name. 
So this is this um, identifier that I mentioned before. So I'm going to type in Google. Let's hope my fat fingers work. Uh, and then I've got my, my email address, so I need to put that in. And that's oh, probably wrong, yeah. so uh, never mind. Right, we'll just do that. <laughs> Make sure you close enough. Next and the password, right? Yep. So, got that. But if I'm a busy yep. sales guy, I don't want to have to set up every app like this. So let's take a look at what it looks like if it's pre configured with managed configuration. So I'm going to go back to the uh, version of Showpad that we pre installed earlier, which is in the work profile. I start off with the same warm welcome showing me what features. But once I'm through that, the only thing I can do is log in. So I'm going to go and log in. And then it's automatically uh, seen, the, uh, seen the company name. And it's shown me my username there as well. So I know it, which username I'm logging in as. And then I can recall which password to get started with. OK, back to slides, please. Sweet. So. I've had the app pushed to my sales team's de uh, devices and pre-configured for them, saving them time and brain power and giving them more time to spend with our customers. As a developer, you can alter the behavior of your app based on configuration that can be customized on a per customer, per user, or even a per, per device basis. You should also be aware of an industry standardization effort called App Config Community which was initiated by a group of leading enterprise mobility management partners. App Config is working with developers and mobile platforms and others in the ecosystem to come up with some common best practices on configuring apps in the business environment. Google is working with App Config to further evolve the app configuration for the benefit of the entire ecosystem. And they've recently unveiled their initial Android guidance in collaboration with Google. So check it out. We're posting the link to the event space now. Thanks, Matt. I hope you're all going to go off and uh, provision uh, managed configuration. Now, we're all familiar with the kind of devices we carry every day. They're great for fun and productivity and selfies. But beyond that, there is a huge range of Android devices suitable for a diverse range of workplaces. So just look in the world around you. And wherever you see a clipboard, there's actually an amazing opportunity for a good Android app experience. Now, we partnered with a group of OEMs, including Honeywell, Zebra, or Zebra, Kyocera, and Panasonic, to bring a range of these Android devices to the wider workplace. All these devices feature tough external cases and a barcode scanning capability. So they're perfect for use in the field. And we have heard from many customers that they want to deploy managed Android devices in logistics, retail, construction sectors. And so we've invested in making Android for Work a really great platform to do that. And now we're asking our developers to build amazing app experiences for what we call COSU, corporate-owned, single-use devices. So what could a COSU app look like? Here's one possibility. Now, we all love the convenience of shopping from home. And if you're anything like me, you order everything from groceries to gifts from the comfort of your couch. In fact, Matt told me his guppy fish was feeling a bit down. And as this real screenshot from Matt's house shows, he decided to order his guppy a new pal. Now, I'm sure most of us don't think about how our latest purchase makes its way to us. Android for Work makes it a breeze for companies like Happy Guppy to set up and manage a fleet of devices so all of their delivery drivers have the apps they need in the palm of their hand. First, IT will set up the fleet of Kosu devices. And there are a number of ways to do this. But from a brand new, out-of-the-box device, setting up Android for Work is as simple as an NFC bump. And in the end developer preview, we've added fast setup using QR codes into the setup wizard, too. Once the devices have been set up, they can be locked down so that only apps authorized by IT are accessible in the launcher. So in this way, by combining apps for barcode scanning, 
with apps for scheduling. And apps like Maps for navigation. With their employee uh, delivery database in the cloud, happy guppy drivers can use a single Kosu device for the job. And when the driver reaches Matt's house, they can use the barcode scanning app to record the delivery. They can get a signature or maybe even a photo if they've left the package in a, in a safe place or unsafe place, and make Matt a happy, happy guppy customer. So whether it's running a single app on a dedicated device or optimizing the entire end-to-end -end experience for a mobile workforce, you can develop great apps for mobile workers. IT can use Play for Work to keep them up to date as well. You know, Matt, I'd have gone a different way with the interior. Yeah. But it looks like Matt's guppy loves his new pal. So how would you build a great Kosu app? To give you some pointers, let's welcome back Rich to show you how. OK, so for a Kosu app, you've got three main points. First of all, you've got the device owner. The device owner is going to go on the device and allow IT admins to remotely own that device. That's really important, because you don't want the user of the device to have to configure it at all. Then you're going to have an NFC provisioning app. The NFC provisioning app, you bump with the device when it's in its setup wizard, and it transfers the data for that device owner to be installed. And then you've got your single-use device. In this case, the Happy Guppy Delivery Drivers application. So here, I'll show you how to get the NFC uh, app and the, de the device owner app in a minute. But once you've got the NFC app, you give it some configurations. And these configurations, when you bump it with the, uh, with the single-use device, are the things that are sent over to the setup wizard. So in our case, we've got this list of URLs, uh, checksums, and package names. They're going to go over during the NFC bump onto the device. And the device in the setup wizard is going to download the device owner, install it, and the device owner will set policies on that device. Mm -hmm. The first thing it's going to do is go and find our Kosu app, which is also passed in here. This is our Happy Guppy app. And it will then also install that application. It then adds it to a white list of applications that can run as kiosk applications, which is why we've got the package name at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try it out for yourself, and we'll show you the demo of this in a second, uh, you can just go into either Android Studio and go to Import Samples and type in Device Admin. And you'll see we've got a few samples. But the bottom two, NFC Provisioning and Device Owner, are the ones we're using. So you've actually got the NFC Provisioning app for creating a Kosu device and the Device Owner app, which goes on as the policy client, which owns the device. You can also go to our GitHub, uh, Google Samples GitHub repo. They're always, always available there as well. So, in the Happy Guppy case, you need to set your kiosk app, the delivery driver app, into full screen mode. And to do that, you've got the start lock task and stop lock task APIs that came in. Before, uh, I think they came in maybe Marsh jelly bean, marshmallow? Marshmallow. OK. I think. Uh, if you use those, it pins the app to the uh, device in full screen, but there's user consent dialogues, and the user can back out. With device owner, if you're on this lock task whitelist, it will go into full screen, and the user can never get back out of it again. You'll see those demo kiosks we've got over on the Android for Work sandbox. It's just a full screen kiosk device. So you're going to want to build a backdoor for yourself whilst you're developing, else you may end up with a very single use device that you can never get back out of. That's expensive development. That could be expensive. $500 yeah. device, $500. In our case, when we were developing, we've got this barcode scanner uh, from Honeywell. We have an admin barcode. And if you scan that admin barcode, it drops back out of single use mode, calls stop lock task, drops out, and then you can reset your device or do what you need to do with it. So as a developer, there's a couple of things to consider for single use devices. First of all, you're going to want, sorry, single use applications. You're going to want your application to be entirely self-contained. You're going to want to own that user journey. If you're a hotel kiosk app, you're going to not want to let the user somehow click a link and get into a web browser and then just start browsing the web on your hotel kiosk. You're going to want to keep them in the, the room booking system. So say you have a web view, like a, a website you want to link to, put it in a web view or a Chrome custom tab, and own the entire experience. If you do need to link out to other apps, you're defining kind of a multi-app Kosu system. And you'll have to figure out the entry points and exit points, or maybe just decide that you're going to want to have a launcher and have a slightly more complex system. You can still have launchers on single-use devices if you want to. So we have that test DPC app that James mentioned earlier. And you can go to Google Samples as well and get the test DPC app to test all the Android for work features out. 
But to be honest, it's not all that complicated if you're just getting into the mindset of being a single-use application developer. So let's see it in action. Let's really on that. So here is an example of a device from Honeywell that's great for a mobile workforce. It's a rugged device running Marshmallow that features a built-in laser scanner. And that's just what we need to get our guppy, his new pal. How could this work for real using an app for work? Rich, we better get to demos, work. James. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get the uh, wolf vision, the projector? Yeah, let's go to the wolf vision. OK, so this is the laser scanning, ruggedized Honeywell Marshmallow uh, machine that we'll be using today. And it's just factory reset on the setup wizard. So to show how easy it is to jinx a demo, I'm going to NFC bump it and turn it into a uh, delivery driver application now. Now, this is just like what the IT team would do when they're setting up devices for their workforce. Just so now, you can, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, during um, setup, uh, on the, uh, the left here, um, we have the programming device. So you can now, see once setup of the Honeywell device is completed, you'll see we're landed right into um, our starting screen. Um, now, during setup, device owner is uh, set. And this is an important step because it uh, means the device can only be managed by, be, by IT. And that IT can set appropriate security policies to govern device and app usage. So you'll see we're all set up and ready to go. As simple as that. Wasn't that fast? <laughs> now, um, we need to, I think, load up on packages and hit the streets. Right. Get my delivery driver going on. I should have turned it into now, that beforehand. What will happen first in our um, demo app is that um, Rich will scan his uh, employee ID badge. OK, so I scan this with the lovely laser scanner. And, and it'll log uh, me in. There we go. We've got delivery details for his various packages. In the demo app, we've integrated navigation using Google Maps right into the launcher app so that he can use Google Maps to safely navigate along the optimal route. Now, devices like this are now shipping with Google Apps like Maps installed. So as a developer, you can be sure that navigation is available on the device. Oh, look, his delivery is right on the Googleplex. How about that? <laughs> um, now, once Rich arrives, he can drop off his package and get a signature. Happy now, guppy, there we go. Oh, wow. wow, cool. As an employee, Rich can't break out of this mode. So there's no risk of confusion, and support costs are reduced. Uh, and the device can be remotely administered by IT using a wide range of Android APIs, uh, such as, for example, being able to remotely reboot and manage the device. So you're going to scan for delivery? Yep. So if I uh, go and scan the package, thank you, I get a signature. There you go. You can all see Matt. Oh, Matt looks so happy. There you go. As you can see, we've got the signature. And Matt's guppy has a cool new friend using Android. I'm going to reiterate that was provisioning an entire single use device from start to end doing a delivery. In about a minute. Yeah. Now, this is just one example of an app for work optimized for COSU devices. But there are many, many more from retail to hospitality to healthcare. We're only just getting started. So, are you all ready to seize the opportunity to make a difference to an entire workforce? Remember how Google and Android can help you. Android is easy to set up for businesses. It's fast for businesses to deploy your app at scale with Google Play for Work. And you can make apps awesome for businesses by allowing them to be customized and configured um, and use SSO as slickly as on the web. Android is ready for business. Now let's go build apps for it. Join us for the public launch of our Android for Work developer community called DevHub, where there are loads of resources for work app developers. Thank you.